in our very first one, I have Angie D here with me, which actually is Angie Dornier, mm -hmm. um, but we call her Angie D here locally. <laughs> um, and Angie is a really awesome photographer. And the reason I thought it would be really fun to have Angie here with us today is because of the fact that fall family portraits are about to hit mainstream here. And I in particular have some anxieties around getting ready for this. Um, I've never been professionally trained on how to prepare for a family <laughs> shoot. So. Most people aren't. No, and now that my son's almost 12 and my daughter's nine, um, I still feel like I have some underlying anxiety around getting ready for family fall portraits. So all that being said, um, invited Angie here, who is our photographer, who's gonna maybe help get past some of my anxieties. I've got some questions on my dandy little iPad, so if you catch me on here, I'm not on the internet. I'm actually looking at my questions. Um, but wanted to ask some questions, and then naturally, if you feel like there's some extra that you want to um, share, please feel free, because like I think you and I described or discussed beforehand, um, I'm sure if I'm having these questions, there's probably other people having them. Everybody. Too. Everybody has the same anxieties and the same questions. So. Awesome. So I'm going to start hopefully with an easy one. I hope so. But it seems that... Um, I noticed, like, for instance, when we got the email a few weeks ago from you saying, hey, guys, it's that time again, um, that you had offered some specific time slots. Um, clearly, there's some weekend ones and there's some weekday ones. Um, but could you just describe real quick, is there a better time to get a photo done than not? Or what are the good times to do them? Because um, I naturally assumed if I didn't get the weekend, like at 8 in the morning, that I was shot for, like, you know, the secondary um, photo and um, I'm just curious if that's true. Not true. Um, there are some of my preferred times, of course, um, and and like most photographers, we would love to um, capitalize on the best light. So the best light usually happens that hour after sunrise and that hour before sunset. They call it the golden hour because the light comes from the sides. It's very flattering on your face. Most of the movies are shot during these times if they're an outdoor setting. They have this nice, pretty glow. The light isn't so harsh on your face. It doesn't cause the, the deep shadows like you get from noontime sun. Um, doesn't give you the shadows under your eyes that make you look like you haven't slept in a week. And yeah, yeah. so we are <laughs> wanting to give you the best light possible. Now that, you know, at the same time, not every person, not every family is a 7 a.m. photo shoot kind of family. And um, I'm, though I am a morning person, I can rally my kids and we could be out the door for something like that. Not all families function that way or feel comfortable being in that kind of a situation. And so, you know, on a case by case basis, we'll talk about what your family is looking for and how to work that best for your schedules because you know that's that's part of my job is to try to help you achieve what you have in your head and so the best light um if you can't meet that time of the best light then we try to find a situation that where the light doesn't um, matter as much where we can have some side lighting um, from a window or go into a shady place or be under a cover so that you don't have those harsh lights um, on your face. And, um, but really it's, it's, you know, if I could have everybody at sunrise, I would because sunlight at sunrise is, um, the, the temperature is really a blue color and the, the colors are real crisp and morning is one of my preferred times to shoot. Um, evening light is a little more warm and it has a little bit more of a softer glow to it and um, but I, I just typically morning light I, I it's my favorite yeah, that's awesome so either within an hour or two of sunrise or an hour or two before the sun sets mm -hmm. let's just say weekend schedules of football and soccer and gymnastics unfortunately take over our world and we're not able to hit in that time frame um, it sounds like there's still options, and even then, you know, photo shopping can still help a lot so that um, you can still look your, hopefully, your best in your photos. Sure. And, you know, I want to, even though I have all of the Photoshop tools available and I'm very versed in how to use it, I'm very, um, I, I want my clients to still be who they are. I want them to be themselves. I don't want them, I don't want to, um, Photoshop some 
um, something to or from them. And, and so I want to make sure that I'm just enhancing their beauty and not um, as using much as a natural shot as a crush. Like, yeah. Right. That's good to know. So even if I'm not able to do it on the weekend, even on a Friday, let's say after work, mm -hmm. meeting you know you and the, the family there. Sure. As long as we good. as long as we can coordinate it ahead of time, and I can make sure that it works with my calendar and my family situation. Yeah. No Absolutely. worries. So then that kind of leads into the next one. Friday, five o'clock, six o'clock. Let's say that we're all meeting there. Mm -hmm. um, personality. So. And where I'm coming from this is, if you go on her website, you're gonna see some of um, some really amazing family portraits, or even um, I would call sibling portraits. And and the ones that I absolutely love the best are the ones where you're seeing this just personality coming yeah. out in the photos of these families. And, and and those are my favorite. They're awesome. So how did you do that? <laughs> I'm just curious because you know it has so much more to do with how comfortable people feel in front of the camera. And once we, usually the pictures that you get that have the more relaxed and you see their personality really shining through, a lot of those have come from the very end of our photo session when their guards have kind of dropped a little bit and they're, they're just, they know we have a few things that we can use. And once you know you have something that's usable, then you just relax and you kind of come into it and you start to have fun with it. And um, because photo shoots, should be fun in my opinion i want them all to be fun i want everybody to to have not dread going to have their portrait taken i want it to be a fun experience and something that everybody gets to take part in and not just be that's a good point there, there is like an immediate stress that there's there about you just got to get that one perfect shot and maybe it's the reverse maybe you'll have the perfect shot if you don't walk in with these expectations Right, and it usually, you know, when we can go with the flow and see how everybody's feeling that day and what's going to work, there are going to be things that don't work, and that's fine. And we just go and we move on to a different spot or a different pose or a different idea or someone cracks a joke or you catch mm -hmm. that in-between moment where you see what's, what's, you know, the relationship between how the, how the family interacts. And those are some of my very favoritest, and I, I have to admit that I am a fan of the outtakes, and so I, I actually have a lot of outtakes that I, I just, I, they make me smile because it's the true personality of the of the people who's coming through. That's what's meant to happen. I mean, let's be real, that's, that's the whole purpose of taking the photos. It's meant to deliver a smile to the person who sees it. So and it's, if it's just, you know, everybody's just standing so posed and so, you know, poised. It, it, I don't know if that always gives the best reflection of, I, that's definitely not my family. My family is, I don't know that we would all be looking in the same direction at the same time ever. So true. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that one. We've kind of got the quirky zany family. The one that just likes to have fun. We're, we're the jigsters, but yeah. Um, and that should come out in your photos. All right. I'll have to start mm -hmm. thinking a little more creatively of how, to, how can I get that portrayed out in the, in the photo? Um, Speaking of which, some families are not just about the human species, it's about animals as well. So curious, um, are pets typically a good thing to have in your family portraits? Um, and is there any creative ways that you've been able to see them used in the family portraits? Oh sure, we've, um, I've photographed lots of pets actually, um, and sometimes it's the, the pet coming and photobombing the family as it's <laughs> happening, which is always hilarious, <laughs> always hilarious. Lots of great outtakes from that. But um, having a pet, you know, it, it's if you want to have your pet included into your photos, I'm absolutely on board with that. I love that pets are part of our families and they add a lot of um, genuineness to your to your photos. But you just have to keep in mind that you, if you, if your dog or your cat, for instance, is not somebody that can go out in public, and then we won't do photos out in public. We'll come to your home and we'll do photos with your pet at home. Or um, if your pet is really perfectly well trained and will sit comfortably in your lap as the photos are happening, then I will do my best to get the, the pet to be looking at the camera. If that doesn't happen, then there we can get a little bit creative um, and knowing ahead of time that you want to plan to have a pet in the shot, you can arrange yourselves very nicely with where the pet might go and then 
Maybe we photograph the pet individually and add it to the family scene afterwards. After that. Mm -hmm. But I would assume as well that a pet can sometimes even break down some of the anxieties initially Absolutely. and they kind of bring out some of the natural genuity, I guess, in the people so sure. that you're capturing some of the most intimate moments and well, not moments, but some of the most intimate gestures or just it, themselves. Exactly. And so and sometimes the, the best photos come from those moments where, you know, the, the pet is coming and snuggling up with the child and the parents are looking down at this, you know, sweet and lovely scene happening in front of them. Or they're laughing because the dog has added a bit of levity to the photo, or the cat has decided it's done and doesn't want to be part of it, and all you see Drop is the, the tail. Mic. Yeah, <laughs> you see the tail leaving the scene. So, and don't judge me for those of you that know that the cat around my house is not my cat. So, if Shadow happens to make his debut on my Christmas cards, no making fun of me. Um, Another question I had around family portraits is around what to wear. Um, I've always been nervous wearing anything with patterns, so I feel like I've always kind of followed the status quo of the typical jeans with the white button down for everybody, or you know, I think one year we did like the black turtlenecks and stuff, because I think I was a little afraid to do anything actually any differently, but you're the professional here. You've seen a variety of, a variety of different types of uh, photographs. Is there, have I just had anxiety for no reason around what to wear? You have anxiety for a very small reason. It's not nearly as bad as you think. You know, having you know, patterns, okay. <laughs> having patterns is not a bad thing. You know, if you, if you have everybody in conflicting patterns, then you might, might not that might not suggest a family unit as well, unless that's exactly the theme that you're going for and you just exaggerate it and, and that's the concept you're going for. But really what, um, around clothing, the, the biggest factor that I've noticed is something that you feel comfortable in, something you feel great in, something that you are just gonna rock, you know? Like if that you put it on and you feel like, yeah, it's on. That is oh, calm, because yeah. as soon as you have that feeling of confidence, then everything else is going to go so much smoother because you feel like you look good. You it it carries through your whole personality. Now, um, I would suggest not wearing something the very first time at your photo shoot because what happens if it's so itchy? or it's a little too tight in one spot, yeah, and you're gonna be so self-conscious about it the whole time. So I would, I would suggest something that you're comfortable in, something that you can move in, because most of the clients that I, I make them move around, we walk from different places to, to, and I don't want you to feel uncomfortable sitting down or um, you know, moving in what you're wearing. Um, and the same thing for families as well with kids. Um, Put the kids in something that it's it's tougher because usually like if your kids are like my kids they want to wear dry fit you know neon whatever yes um, all the time and so having a collared shirt or something um, might be a little out of character but if you can make it to something that that is a compromise for them it's not like my son will wear a um, polo golf shirt that's a dry fit golf shirt, oh, okay. but it has a collar and it looks nice, and he wears that with no problem. If you can find something like that that your kids feel comfortable in, that they don't feel like you're suffocating or... Um... Alternatively, you can turn it around and you can let them help pick what happens, and you can coordinate your outfits based on what they mm. want, and then they have buy-in and they're interested and they're involved. Good point. Good mm -hmm. point. And you know, as you say that, I'm trying to think what would my family portrait look like if I let Max or Amy do plan it? Because <laughs> I think that would be hilarious. <laughs> she would probably fit me in spandex and tell me to do gymnastics moves, and I would be, would be awesome in such a panic. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. Obviously, I'm going to post my family portrait, so eventually, you guys will get to see what what uh, is meant to be this year for Christmas or holiday photos. But. Um, that's a good point. I've never really thought about including the kids and saying, hey guys, we're going to do family portrait and we really want to make sure that we capture our personality. So that being said, what should we do? I had a family whose son said, I want to wear a suit. 
And so the rest of the family scheduled their wardrobe around the fact that he wanted to wear a suit. And how did that portrait turn out? That's amazing. Amazing, I bet. Because they all were, they all bought into it. Yeah. So, so good point. So it's still a, it's a good idea to include the kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, I'm looking at my questions, I swear I'm not on the internet. Just making it. <laughs> so I think the last question I have is, um, you've done this clearly for a long time, mm -hmm. and you've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. What are some of the biggest no-nos uh, in terms of bridge, don't do this, um, <laughs> that you would be willing to share? Um, and um, you know, just any advice that you can have that you haven't already shared would be really awesome. Sure. Um, so one thing, and, and it, it just may not occur to people that this is in poor taste, but don't have someone else besides me photographing at the same time you know you might grandma might be there with you to help get everybody you know dressed and looking their best and those kinds of things or wants to be included for some of the pictures but not all of the pictures but if someone's standing behind me and photographing while I'm photographing that's just that's grounds to yeah kick. just don't just don't do that don't do that <laughs> Um, another thing that's a that's a no no um, in my book is, and this is this is just something because of the way I like to um, photograph, and I'm I'm a parent and I understand that kids are going to be themselves, and despite how we want them to pose or sit, but um, that's part of my job is to help them get the way that they need to be and so parents don't have to stand behind me and tell them to smile and look at the camera and, oh. <laughs> i think you're describing me <laughs> i'm that one they, they don't have to do that especially if the types of pictures like is my preferred style are the more real genuine interactions and the the real expressions you're not going to get a real expression from your from your kid if you're standing behind me threatening them within an inch of their life or um, you know <laughs> um, or telling them constantly to you know do this that or the other I can so trust the photographer yeah it trust like, the process okay. and especially luckily the one that's a mom so she gets it. <laughs> and I can do it fart noises with the best of them so I can help keep some entertain I can I can I can pull out all the stops whatever it takes okay so Trust the photographer. Yes. Please don't take photos behind the photographer. It's funny, I never thought of that, but I can see the perspective of that. And um, yeah, so I guess you have all rights if you're hearing somebody take pictures behind you to turn around and take a picture of them taking a picture. And <laughs> <laughs> take them on the spot. Don't be that guy. <laughs> no, no. Awesome. Any is there anything else advice wise? Or you know, as far as just if if the if the style that you're coming to me for um, and what you see if, is, if that's what you want, is the more personality and the more real, then just relax and let it happen. And you don't, it, it doesn't have to be some anxiety inducing event. So, so yoga would be good before yeah. you take your face. Yeah, baby. absolutely. <laughs> just to have time to shower in between. That's right. So, <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that you've answered some really good questions. Um, things that's funny, I've never really had the time to ask. And really felt like it was more just photos on the schedule. Go get on Gap real quick. Make sure everything matches, and then make your way over. So it's been really nice actually having a chance to sit down and put some thought to this because um, I think you were explaining earlier how some of the best ones are the ones as well that have had some good thought to it and are kind of like you go go back to personality, bring your personality out either in the theme that you're trying to capture for the year or just in general personality from the family that comes out. So. Um, have fun with it, it seems like, is a common theme that you're hearing from you. Have fun with it. Have fun with it. All right, cool. Well, thank you very much for being here and talking with me in particular and then giving me a chance to share what you're sharing um, with the rest of the To Be Simply Happy fans of readership out there. So first blog, it will be on our YouTube <laughs> channel, so definitely subscribe. It will also be in our post. And naturally, and anything that you're hearing from the video here, if you have any questions, write in comment. Yeah. Um, Angie's 
uh, website will be included in the blog. So you absolutely feel free to either interact with her on the blog or just email her directly. Just go to the website. I think your email's in there. It's pretty easy, breezy to get a hold of her. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I promise I'll be sharing my family portrait and maybe even the, some, the funnier ones that maybe won't be on the Christmas We have to side. share some outtakes, of course. You're speaking of. If you have any hilarious family photos or some of your best in terms of themes that you've done, absolutely share them because I'm curious and I'd love to give my kids some ideas as well on some things that they want to influence me to let them do for their family portraits. But uh, in any event, thank you very much and uh, checking out. And until then, you guys, don't forget to be happy and to keep it simple. Ciao.